Yo, what's going on gamers? It's Ryan Six Days a Week, and in this video we're going to go over the mechanics behind the Lich boss fight, as well as exactly what you need to do to survive them. This inferno boss is considered the easiest of the three at the moment, so if you're just getting started on boss hunting, it's recommended that you begin with this one. So let's jump right into it. There are a total of five types of damaging abilities that the Lich may use at any time during the fight. First, we have the normal ranged attack. A fast traveling projectile that does 50 magic damage, but it can also be affected by the headshot multiplier, so beware of that. Before casting this attack, the Lich will briefly raise both their hands, so look out for that as an indicator to dodge to the side. However, if you're far enough away, just simply strafing in one direction will be enough to avoid getting hit by any of these normal ranged attacks. The next move is the strong range attack. This is also a projectile magic attack, but it is much slower moving, homing, and will deal 100 magic damage upon reaching you. This is enough to one-shot most classes. Before casting this attack, the Lich will stand still and spin their staff above their head a total of 3 times. The casted projectile will follow the targeted player until it collides with another unit, like a skeleton summons, or an environment hitbox such as walls, doors, or even pavises that you have set up. One of the easiest ways to dodge this attack is to stow your weapons away and take a tight turn around any corner entrance. This will force the orb to run into the sides of the arena, or one of the nearby lamps. Third, we have the melee knockback, a move that only gets triggered if you're standing too close to the lich. This attack does 70 magic damage and will knock the player back into the air. Before casting this attack, the lich will say a random voice line and wind up a swing. So use this as a cue to step back for a moment if you are a melee player. Fourth, we have the curse of gathering bright purple circle that requires the players to gather their team within the bounds of the AoE. If both your teammates are with you when the curse expires, you each take roughly 50% HP as magic damage. If only one other team member is on the inside of the purple circle with you, you will each take roughly 50% HP as magic damage. If you're alone, you will instead take 95% of your HP as magic damage. Like many debuffs in this game, this curse may be cleansed. Fifth, we have the curse of isolation which appears as a blue circle surrounding a player, and is the exact inverse of the Curse of Gathering. This curse requires the player to distance themselves from their party completely. If any other players are on the inside of the blue circle when the curse expires, both the cursed player and any party member will take heavy magic damage. The magic damage begins at 50% of your max HP if you're alone, 70% if there is a single other player, and 90% if both of your teammates enter the blue AoE. Just like the Curse of Gathering, the Curse of Isolation is categorized as a debuff and may be cleansed. A simple rhyme to remember this is Blue Shoe, as in Go Away, or Blue Out of You, for my French friends out there. And for Purple, uh, I couldn't think of a word that rhymes with purple, so just Gropel together? I don't know, that's a bit of a reach. On top of the 5 damaging abilities, the Lich also has two more non damaging mechanics that are important to pay attention to during the fight. The first one is the Resurrection ability, which lets the Lich revive all skeleton footmen and archers in the arena, to full HP. When this happens, it's a good time to get any high damaging but long channeling spells in, as the Lich will be occupied for around 3 seconds while the Resurrection is being casted. Second, we have Soul Steal, which is only triggered after a player is killed by the Lich. After casting on one of your teammates bodies for a brief moment, the Lich will give themselves a shield that will absorb 250 damage before breaking. If you're attempting the boss in High Roller, there's also one additional skill named Death Swarm, in which the Lich summons a mini version of the main game's Death Swarm mechanic with a safe zone centered around the Lich that is highlighted in purple. Any player that is outside of the purple safe zone will take 4 damage per second, but beware, any skeletons that do enter the circle will receive an attack and movement speed buff. So in summary, there's a normal range attack that can be sidestepped, a strong range attack that is homing but will break on collision with any unit or surface, a melee knockback that has a brief wind up, a purple curse of gathering that requires players to come together, a blue curse of isolation that requires players to spread apart, a channeled resurrection skeleton skill, a self shielding spell that triggers only on player death, and a high roller specific death swarm skill that damages any player on the outside of the highlighted purple zone and buffs skeletons who enter the inside area. One more thing about High Roller Lich is its non-cursed damaging abilities will all do 50% more damage than the normal mode boss. Alright, you now know all the Lich moves and mechanics. Oh, 
And don't forget to loot the bottomless loot hoard in the boss room right after your victory. Thanks as always for watching, and please feel free to leave a comment with any questions you have, or even ask me live if I'm playing. If you'd like to see a full boss fight with some more class-focused strategies, you can find the video linked below. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next one.